Okay, let's talk about the domain and range of exponential functions. Exponential functions are ones where each x value is multiplied by something else to get the next value. So you can end up with exponential growth, or if you're multiplying by a decimal or a, a small fraction, you can end up with exponential decay as well. All of these equations are gonna be y equals, and then there's going to be a number to the power of x. The fact that x is in the exponent is what makes it an exponential function, but you can have two to the x, that's a whole number to the power of x. You can have fractions to the x, that fraction might be less than one or greater than one. The only values that we generally don't see for b are negative ones, zero, and one. So anything that's positive and not one is generally acceptable for a base. All of these, as is, the base functions are going to have a domain of x e r, that's x is an element of all real numbers, because you can raise a whole number or a fraction to the power of anything you want. You can raise it to the zero, you can raise it to the hundred, doesn't matter. And as long as the base is positive, the range is always going to be y greater than or equal to zero. There's something called a horizontal asymptote on exponential functions. And as long as there's no vertical shift, it's going to be at zero. You should write in y er as well, because y also has to be a real number. Now that's just for the base function, some number to the power of x. As soon as you start transforming it with stretches or compressions or shifts, even reflections making either a or k negative, you're going to change these. Now, the domain actually will always stay the same. You can still raise anything to the power of x, no matter what you might be doing to that x before you actually make it a power. The domain of every exponential function is x e r done. We're going to do 24 examples. That's going to be the domain every time. The range, on the other hand, is going to be different. The range depends on whether or not there's a negative here, whether or not there's a negative up here on the exponent, and it's going to depend on the vertical shift as well. You're either going to have x is greater than the value of d, or you're going to have x is less than the value of d, depending on whether or not your exponential function is increasing or decreasing. We'll work on that in just a second. Whoops, that's y greater than d, y less than d as your two options. Then you'll also have to say y e r. Enough talk, let's do 24 examples together until you're either awesome at this or you're ready to quit. Let's do it. Here are some graphs. Let's find the domain and range of each exponential function. Now this function goes infinitely to the left and right. So the domain, as I promised, is going to be x e r. Now your job for the range is to figure out how high and low the function goes. It goes forever upward and it comes down and seems to flatten out right about here. That's on the x-axis, and that's a y value of zero. Now this is actually a horizontal asymptote. y equals zero is a line that it gets closer and closer to, but never actually touches. That means it's not y greater than or equal to zero, it's straight up y greater than zero. I've picked greater than because we're above that threshold of zero, we're above the horizontal asymptote then write y e r for yourself. Great job. Domain of this goes infinitely to the left, infinitely to the right. I know it looks like it turns upward very quickly. That's simply because it's rising quickly. This graph would continue moving to the right the whole way. Domain, no surprise, x e r. I should have a stamp made. The range here, well, find your horizontal asymptote it's here at zero, and we're above it again. So it's y greater than zero, y e r. Let's keep going. Here, domain, 
XCR. Can I stop that yet? Oh well. The horizontal asymptote here is also zero, see? Right there, but we're below it. So my range is going to be slightly different. The y values that you can get out of this are below zero, less than zero. Y E R. All right. Same thing here goes infinitely to the left and right. That's X E R for the domain. And the range, find your horizontal asymptote. It is at zero, we're below it, y less than zero, y e r. Great, more. Finally, we're changing where the horizontal asymptote is. Let's take a, let's take a look here. I think this dotted line that I'm drawing is the line that it gets close to but never touches. To me, that looks like negative four. Thank goodness for the scale, eh? The domain won't be a surprise. The range is the fact that this graph is below negative four and gets close to it but never touches it. That's y less than, less than for below the horizontal asymptote, negative four, y, e, r. Do another one with the horizontal asymptote. Kind of looks like here to me. If that's five, that's six, that's seven. My horizontal asymptote is y equals seven. So my range is I'm below it. Y less than seven. Y e r. Domains x e r. More horizontal asymptote work. This one looks like it gets close to and never touches y equals negative six. We are above it. So the range is y greater than negative six. See how I'm just picking out the horizontal asymptote? And then greater than or less than based on whether or not I'm above or below it. Last one for the graphs, and I got some equations for you. That is at y equals two. I'll label it for you. We are above it. So the range is y greater than two. Y is an element of the real numbers. Beautiful. Find the horizontal asymptote and figure out if you're above or below it. So there is no shift here. What that means is that the horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. It's always zero unless there's a vertical shift of some kind. You'll know a vertical shift when you see one. It's added or subtracted, usually from the end. The domain is XCR, as always. Now, your job is gonna to be to figure out if this is above or below the x-axis. The only thing that affects that is whether or not there's a negative in front. No negative out front of the base means that it will open upward, which to me means that it is above the horizontal asymptote. So you're going to end up with y greater than that same number that you got from the horizontal asymptote, zero. Nice, you're gonna learn that we can ignore a lot of the other stuff. Now here there is a negative out front. This one is a negative. That means it will open downward, either this way or um, that way. In either case, they're going to be below the horizontal asymptote. And the horizontal asymptote is y equals zero again. So domains x, e, r, the range is y less than zero because it was below because there's a negative in front of the base. Yeah? Yeah. All right. I'm going to power through the rest of these. A negative out front of x actually does not affect the uh, the range. I should have pointed that out here. That one never even really mattered. There's no negative out front, so it's y greater than, nothing added or subtracted, zero, comma y e r. There is a negative, y less than. What's added or subtracted from the end? Nothing. No negative, y greater than. Nothing added or subtracted. Negative, y less than. Nothing added or subtracted. 
No negative out front here. Y greater than. Negative. Y less than. Now we're going to get to some interesting ones. Here we have no negative. So it's Y greater than. But we do have a different horizontal asymptote. Because there's something added or subtracted from the end, we have a vertical shift. And the horizontal asymptote has moved up 8 units to 8. It will always be the same as that number. Y greater than 8. Don't forget for all of these, you're supposed to write Y E R. Put it in some curly brackets. Most teachers want R for a range. But let's keep going. There's a negative out front. Y less than 8. No negative out front. Y greater than negative 29. Negative out front. Y less than negative 94. No negative. Y greater than negative 4. Negative. Y less than negative 4 again. No negative. Y greater than 11. Negative. Y less than. Copy that out. It's positive 1.6. That's it. It's going to be pretty fast once you get the hang of it, once you know what to look for. And look at that. 11 and a half minutes, you're an expert. Thank me later. Best of luck.